Welcome back to Logical Magic Examining Esoterica. Hey guys, today I have an episode for you that is going to give you information on the single most important thing that you can do to try and reclaim your power, to try and enhance your gifts, to try and reclaim your energy so that you can find your own spark, so you can have your own focus. And it comes from a slightly surprising direction, so I'm going to ask you to hang with me for a minute while we go into the reasons that it's important that it happens to be this particular thing. Before I do that, and we're going to get the housekeeping out of the way, because we have to do it at the top so that people listen to it. And this is not planned as a long episode, but I never plan them as long episodes. I say what needs to be said, and I stop when I'm told to stop. So uh, you can find me at therisingmoon.com. That is the only way to book me for a tarot card reading or a life coaching session. Um, the, there are impersonators of all tarot card readers with following. So just be aware, I'm never going to reach out to you in a DM. I'm never going to approach you saying I've been called to give you a reading. I have to give this speech regularly because it just happens over and over again. Um, you can also find me at Chromecast at the Rising Moon, where the video versions of these particular uh, segments and discussions go up. And then I have a Patreon where I give weekly and monthly spirit guide messages. Sometimes there will be personal messages for like one member of the collective, but the overall energy is uh, conveyed to everyone as well and contains information for them too. Teaching Tarot in Reverse, we're doing a couple other things there. I hope you're able to join us. So that was the housekeeping. Let's talk about the single most important thing that you can do to enhance your psychic gifts, to enhance your magic, and to enhance your personal power. First, we need to go into the idea of our programming that we have been programmed into essentially cycles. We uh, expel our energy. We use our energy in a way that is programmed into us. If you think about the structure of most schools, they actually were a template for people being factory workers. And this is actually a sociological fact. This is not anything woo-woo. Um, they were designed so that people would respond to a bell and then move to the next classroom. And so that we worked in very structured environments with a great many rules and that there would be somebody in charge of it. And it's also to keep things from being chaotic, but it genuinely was to try and engender within a person the idea that they were easily triggered toward a certain pattern of behavior that would then benefit sometimes society in a not negative way, not always. It just has a tendency to be when power gets involved, people start misusing it. And so it became something negative. So that was one of the structures that was superimposed on most people. And as more and more people are homeschooled, which is something I don't really have an opinion on. I know somebody who ended up in the Ivy League because both of his parents were incredibly intellectual people and there was no religious connotation within his homeschooling. Um, and he did exceptionally well. I've also known people who don't get the basic facts because they're being homeschooled and their information is curated to the strong beliefs of a particular family. It's an individual choice, and I'm not here to comment on that. It's just that's the example I'm using for the structure that you have been participating in for the use of your energy. Um, if you look at different things within our society, we are taught to line up and wait in lines, and we, we know how to inhabit a certain energetic groove. And some of that is harmless, and I've talked to Bohr about the need to break your routines, but it has become more and more obvious that people do not recognize an aspect of the modern day that is the single most important thing if you want to have your own psychic guidance, if you want to have your own ability to manifest, which people in the law of attraction are always trying to manifest things like wealth and uh, success, and they wonder why, it, and why isn't it working, why isn't it working, because you're giving too much of your energy to something that does not actually give it back. And guess what it is, guys? It's your phones. I mentioned this in another podcast that if you really want to test yourself, put your phone away for a day and see how hard that is for you. And the harder it is, the more you need to do it. But social media and the interaction with your iPhones, with your smartphones, with whatever Google Play, whatever it is that you're using to have your experience with a smartphone, please understand that that genuinely is designed to have an addictive quality to it so that you, you just keep scrolling through. You keep, and what is that? It's a monster energy drain. It is the biggest attachment that everybody in the society has. And the reason that it really came through to me this morning is I go for a walk in the morning. Um, I frequently go for a walk after work as well. I'm, I'm very active. Um, in the summer, since I can't hike, I always make sure that I just get a ton of exercise because it's one of the things that really helps me with my own um, ability to connect is I have to spill off my excess physical energy. And it's one of the ways that I do that. And I passed a much older man. He was walking an older dog. 
and his eyes were glued to his phone screen as he's walking down a beautiful street. There's a gourd. I, I live near a neighborhood where it looks like a film set. It's so beautiful. And I, I don't live in a particularly opulent place, but I have access to the most beautiful things you've ever seen. I feel very, very fortunate and very, very blessed. And this man was absolutely blind to how beautiful his surroundings were. There are butterflies flying by. I'm being literal. There are bluebirds. I'm being literal. This man didn't see anything because he's staring at his phone and staring at his phone. And I've been noticing that more and more as I move throughout the world is that people no longer have the ability to focus their energy on something that benefits them, but they're focusing their energy on something that drains them. Your energy, your power, your abilities are all being siphoned off of you by an attachment to social media. And it doesn't mean it's evil. There's still a place for it. There's always a place for something that's escapist. Moderation and self-control is the most important aspect of it. And I'm on social media. I don't like, well, not in the capacity a lot of people are, but I post on YouTube. <laughs> I do a podcast, all accessible through social media. Social media itself is not evil. But you have to be aware of the detrimental impact on your life, on your energy, on your ability to focus on the things that would solely benefit your own purposeful journey and your own divine connection. If you cannot stop looking at your phone when you're out grocery shopping, that's a problem. It's a compulsion. You have been programmed into compulsive activities. And I think it was in 2010 when, you know, Jeff, Jeff, whatever his name is, Zuckerberg, I think that's what his name is, um, invented uh, Facebook. And people, it was something new. It was a way to keep in touch. But it, it, it's very much, it brainwashes people in whatever their curated feed tells them to. So they get a very insular view of a particular world. And I really don't post on Facebook um, other than on my business page. And it is partially because it is an inauthentic image that you are interacting with. People only show you what they want you to see. It means that people are pretending they have these great lives and so that they will feel important if other people are watching them. The idea of people being an influencer, please be afraid of the idea of somebody trying to influence your personal fashion choices and spending choices like that because there is an agenda behind it. And even though some of the influencers are delightful people, they're participating in a structure that's draining you. It's draining you. The single most important thing you can do to enhance your psychic gifts, your magical gifts, and your ability to find your purpose is every single week have 24 to 72 hours where the only thing that you are using your phone for is to respond to actual voicemails having to do with your business or family members in an emergency. Start cutting some ties. We used to be out of touch more easily. And that is the same thing as unplugging. It is an incredibly important thing because remember, connections go both ways, always. If you are constantly connecting to a social media platform, you are funneling and channeling your focused energy into something that will simply take from you and deplete you and often make you feel lesser and as if you're getting something wrong or like you can never find the answers because somebody always has a different answer. Get your answers. Find your sources, and you do not have to give it up entirely, but it has to be 24 to 72 hours a week where you are not interacting with social media. You can read. You can play video games if you want to, although be careful of just transferring that energy into another compulsive activity. It is better to do something where you learn something new so you are expanding your abilities, as I went into in another podcast I did about how to expand your abilities. But people still aren't getting the need to decompress. And if you don't like meditating and in a world where people literally, I, it has been amazing to me, people have a false sense of urgency around being in contact with other people. And I get that we are socially programmed to care whether or not we're accepted, which leads to a conformist society. Part of the reason I'm not really invested in that is I've never fit in. I'm not ever really going to fit in. I don't have much of an interest in fitting in. Fitting in means that you're participating in structures that are showing a lot of structural integrity issues. <laughs> Our structures are crumbling. For goodness sake, get away from them to find out what you need to do to repair your own one. It really is the single most important thing that you can do to try and refresh your energy. It will allow you to recharge and particularly 
I'm always telling people you got to learn to meditate. You have to. But if you can't yet, then this will start giving you the space to be able to feel like there is a sense of urgency that comes from this, particularly in our short form social medias like TikTok, like Instagram, any shorts on YouTube as well. Anything that is lessening your attention span is not your friend. It is the thief of your personal energy and your personal power. And you need that to get what you want in this life, to have the meaningful relationships, to have the meaningful career, to have the meaningful progress. And sometimes you will have to participate in social media to do that because it's how we reach each other in this day and age, but have limitations around it. Put a structure around the thing that takes all your energy and keeps you from writing that novel, painting that beautiful portrait, whatever it might be. If your focus is always drawn to something that is not actually giving back is often involving you in needless and pointless drama and trying to get you to focus all of your energy sometimes on political realms, which like, listen, we all have candidates, we support their positions more than the others, but most of these people would not know you if they tripped over your dead body in the street, nor would they care. Please stop giving all your focus to them. They want power and they're not all evil, but they're participating in a power structure that has stopped serving everybody. Step away. You've got to be able to step away from the things that are trying to influence your thought patterns. Learn new things, go towards reading, go towards listening to healing sound things. If you can't, if you really can't bear to be away from it, please understand listening to mantras helps as well because it'll help create energetic space within you. Listening to music helps too. That's your other, we're gonna talk about placebos. What can you do to fill that space? Because you're like, I start to go nuts. I start to wonder what's going on. The only time I can't check my phone is when it's a superimposed thing where I'm on a flight and there's no way to do it. And then what do you see when everybody lands the very first thing they do as if someone is in fact dying on a table, everybody boots up their phone. Like there's urgency there. There's rarely urgency there. But people are afraid that they're missing out on some giant de giant development. The giant developments will find you. <laughs> Someone will bring the news. It is rare that you're really going to miss something of such extreme importance. You can catch up later. But what you can't do is get your life back once you've wasted it funneling all of your energy into something that will not truly give back to you, but quite frequently will be making you con uh, question your self-worth and the worth of your life and the worth of your journey. I am not somebody who pines for the good old days by a lot. Because the good old days were not good for most people. And we have a tendency to shine, like uh, we, we focus on what we think was great then and try to ignore the things that were obviously not great. And we can't go backwards, but it doesn't mean that everything that is left in the past has no value in the present. And one of the things that was left in the past was the idea of being disconnected from society. I used to think that be, having insomnia in 1956 must have been like the worst thing in the entire world because you would feel so isolated and so alone and you'd be up alone by yourself, no way to reach out, nothing on a TV screen, nothing to help fill that space. And now I've begun to understand that that space may serve a very important uh, purpose in our own inspiration. You need space to be inspired. And that is where your magic and your creativity really are in your inspiration. True magic lies in the inspiration that comes to us in the moments when we are a little bit disengaged, we're unloading a dishwasher, we're taking a shower, anything where it's very, it's just kind of a rote activity that your body knows how to go through the motions like running or exercising. It's one of the reasons that active open-eyed meditation can fill in when you really do not like to sit and just breathe. But you need that space. You need that space. And the more that you are like, I can't do that, the more you need to. That is the biggest sign around any type of needed change in your life. The more resistant you are to it, question whether or not there is something influencing that because it's not good for you. Because I need you to ask yourself, what was the last time you got away from a social media thing and you felt elated and happy? It's usually very fleeting. Peace out when you see something that makes you laugh. Find your end date on things. Start setting firmer boundaries with how much of my energy will I give to something that is not actually take is not actually giving anything back, but is constantly taking my focus. You need your focus for your power. You need your focus. You need your focus. You need your focus. Take it back. And the easiest way to do that is to get away from your phone 24 to 72 hours every single week. 
And does that align with weekends? Yeah. Use them to make your plans and then don't take them with you. Leave them in cars or purses or in dashboards. If you're like, somebody will break in and steal it. Put it in the dashboard. Lock your car. No one's going to know. Please stop having so much social interaction with something that's not a person. It's not a person. It's a thing. It really could be designed to look like a freaking extension cord because it is plugging into you and taking, taking, and taking, and taking, and taking. And more often than not, people end up feeling lonelier. There is a guy on TikTok, and I do like TikTok. I can watch it for like 30 minutes a day. Like I said, I peace out when something makes me happy. And I watch it to see a couple of cute dog videos. It puts me in a good mood. And I set it aside because I know that if I put more influence or energy into it, that it will simply start being something. And the reason I started doing that was I noticed that I was having trouble like having end dates on things. Like, oh, I'll just put this down at 930 and I'll go read a book. If it is difficult for you, it means that you're supposed to do it because it is something that is draining your energy rather than you being in control of it. Whenever you struggle to do something that's healthy for you, it is an indication of an influence or an attachment. And is it a form of compulsion? 100% it's a form of compulsion. You are comp Your energy is compelled into something that will not personally benefit you, but will benefit something else. You need that energy. You need that space. And you need that free time to come up with what you really need to do to focus on your own goals. And a lot of people can't look at their phones at work. And then it's not actually a recreational activity. It is something to fill the space. And the guy that I was talking about on TikTok, um, he's the guy who did the Rubik's Cube thing where he, uh, like, he's, he's actually a really sweet looking guy, but he looks like a 1972, like, grandpa or something because he's very, like, he's very retro in his styles. And he's only about 24, 25 years old. I like the kid a lot. Like, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be reductive, like, but to me, he's, he's a much younger person. And he had put out a TikTok and it was making the rounds not that long ago where he was talking about, you know, if I'm being honest, I'm not doing so well. Now, that stayed off of everybody's FYP page, and he went into like depression and pessimism and all the things that he was experiencing. And two months later, it shows up on everybody's FYP page. And he has to do a response video in which he's saying, I don't even recognize that person any longer. And do you know why? He stopped being on social media as much. He was going hiking every day. He was getting off his phone. He was unplugging from his devices. You have to unplug from your electronic devices. They're draining your power. They're draining your power. It is coming at a bigger cost than your electric bill. It is taking away your ability to use your personal energy and your personal focus to achieve the things that you want. And you can want whatever you want. Honest to goodness, I know that I'm always life's purpose and let's help each other and let's fix this joint because it needs a fixing. But if you're like, I just want a husband, I just want a wife, I just want a career, dude, that's fine. You don't need to want the things that I want, but I'm trying to tell you that the things that you want are ever elusive because something is taking all of your power and your focus and it fits in the palm of your hand. Put it down 24 to 72 hours a week. And does it have to be consecutive? It's helpful. It's helpful if you wake up on a Saturday morning, you check it for important messages, and you just reply with, I won't be available by text or email or, or for anything other than emergencies until Monday. Start setting your freaking limits to reclaim what your life's energy is meant to do, which is to fuel your own life. Doom scrolling on Twitter just bombards your brain with information that you cannot truly do anything with. When I'm telling people how to expand their magical abilities and saying, go out and learn something new, expand your knowledge base. That is not expanding your knowledge base. It is keeping you in a perpetual loop. Expand your knowledge base by cutting the ties to the things that are not actually helping you. They're not actually helping you. They're demanding your focus. And what is your focus? It's your willpower. What is your focus? It's your magic. What is your focus? It's your power. You got to take back your power. This is the easiest way to do it. Divorce yourself from your devices for a small period every single week. And if you really are like, I tried it and I started climbing the walls, that is a sign of a dysfunction within your brain. What are you supposed to do when something isn't working? You turn it off and turn it back on. You got to start turning your brain off so that it'll, re it'll turn back on in an ordered and a coherent and a logical and a productive fashion. Like I said, this is not going to be a long message. 
but it's such an important one that I really wanted to stress it over and over again. You will notice an ability to be guided towards choices that are good for you. You will find inspiration. You will find hope. You will rediscover your interests when you stop comparing yourself to others, which is what social media really is about. I talked about conforming structures at the very top of this and how we are all have it absolutely programmed into us that that's what we're supposed to do. Conform, 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 conform. That does not have your best interests at heart. If you want your own life, if you want your own magic, if you want your own trajectory in this world, you have to reclaim you. Think of it as the most robust form of self-care is I disconnect and I allow myself to connect to how I feel about my existence, how I feel about what I'm doing. I ask questions of the universe and I am patient and peaceful as the answers come into the space that I have created. But no wonder y'all can't hear your intuition. You're always hearing the voice of somebody in a short format tweet telling you what their outrage is or their excitement is or how they feel about this. Figure out how you feel about things for yourself and you will be harnessed to your own personal power. Your internal world contains your answers and don't let other people control the flow of energy and thought and inspiration that goes into it. Take what you're supposed to take what might inspire you and then you step away to see what you think about it, what you're guided towards, because we all do have different answers and we do all do have different paths. Like I said, I'm going to keep this one short because in honor of the actual subject, we're having trouble with our attention span. And this will get your attention span back. And when you are able to have an attention span that focuses on your own life, your ability to enjoy your life will return. The TikToker I was referring to he talked about all of the things that he was doing, and it was all about stepping away from social media. And there he found joy and purpose and hope. Social media and your constant interaction with it is actually fueling a disbelief in the idea of miraculous intervention in your life, which is your guidance, which is your intuition, which is your creativity. And you do not need to believe in a divine purpose to believe that people can have that spark of inspiration. If you're letting something else take your fire, you're never going to have your spark. Find your spark. Find your spark and you will find the inspiration for the life that you truly want. It's been Logical Magic examining esoterica in an uncharacteristically short episode, but please listen to me. 24 to 72 hours every single week, your life will transform. Your life will transform when you start living it for your purpose instead of the purpose of something that is ultimately trying to make money off of you. Okay. Take care. Be well. If you need to find me, it's at therisingmoon.com or Chromecast at the Rising Moon on YouTube.